The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hello, I'm Carl Seidel, host of The People's View. The show is sponsored by the Nashua City Republican Committee. And if you like to attend our meetings at the second Thursday of every month at 6.30 at the Crown Plaza. And if you want to find out more about our organization, you can go to nashuagop.org uh, to see our website and learn about the events that we have. Welcome to The People's View. Hello, and today we have Ken Gidge, who's representative from Ward 2 in Nashua. Ken, welcome Ward aboard. Ward 6. Ward 6, don't get I'm me in sorry. Trouble. Get you, the, I, was, I don't know why I was thinking of 2. Well, you're in 1. Yeah, I'm in 1. 2 is with Susanna. That's what I remember. Oh, yes, that's, that's right. right. That's right. Okay. But anyway, you're from Ward 6 forever. I don't know how long you've been representative well, my, out of there. My father was born in Ward 6. Oh, uh, boy. St. Joseph Hospital. They lived on Blossom Street. Uh-huh. Built a house in Ward 6, met my mother in Ward 6, was married in Ward 6. Uh, I'm sorry I had to jump a ward to get, to, for me to be born. I was born at... Uh, at the hospital. At, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> at, at, at Southern, or oh, well, it was Memorial then, uh -huh. but it was right across the street from Ward 6, so I haven't gone anywhere. Oh, boy. Uh, anyway, uh, how, do you, how, how do you think the uh, session's going up there in Concord? It's strange overall, the yeah. whole, whole overall with the Republican Democrats. That's that's kind of interesting itself, and obviously with the with the speaker, the new speaker, and people who are dividing themselves between the new speaker and the old speaker. That's interesting, uh, but you guys, the the Republicans who are the majority, are getting what, really what they want. Well, so, don't you think they started working together a little bit? I think uh, when they came together on some of the uh, issues that made up the budget, uh, they uh, sort of showed that uh, the Republicans were coming together. Well, what I heard was that the, either the speaker or the former speaker called, because they're divided. I think there's 100 that are caucusing with O'Brien and 100-plus with uh, the Speaker Jasper. So it's so odd, but you have you the, the Republicans. You Republicans have come together because you don't want to lose mm -hmm. some of the simple things. Yeah, I mean that's. So I think they had a little meeting of the minds there just before the vote and uh, yes, they came did. up and they changed a few things around uh, because we knew, uh, for example, Nashua didn't want a 24 percent cut in that uh, uh, funding that they were getting for uh, subs uh, sustained uh, budget and education. Well, it, it's interesting. It, we're not strong enough here. We really are not. Uh, we are a, uh, the second largest uh, uh, representatives in the state of one, one place. Mm -hmm. uh, Manchester is the largest. We're, we're the second largest. But we never seem to be strong enough. We never all seem to work together. Mm. We just can't convince enough people, because after Concord, forget it. I mean, Nashua is like, we're in, you know, we're in Massachusetts. That's <laughs> really, that's... A lot of people might think that. No, yes. that's, I'm telling you. Yeah. I mean, so we're so, so they don't care about us. So mm. we're kind of odd. But yet we're still the economic engine that runs the state. Yeah. And that is the truth. And when people look at it and think of it in those terms, uh, hopefully, uh, because we are. Can you the manufacturing imagine? is the largest manufacturing up, uh, right. uh, se section of the state. Right. I agree. We're larger than Manchester. Right. Think about that. I mean, mm -hmm. come on. And look at the how buildings in Manchester. I mean, you'd, you'd think that they would, and they got the airport. So there's a whole bunch of things. And you guys, of course, you don't want rail. So here we go again. Uh, the whole state doesn't want rail. I was surprised when uh, it came up in my committee again. That, uh, as you know, I wanted to go step by step uh, on that. I didn't want to go uh, full fledged up to Manchester. I wanted to see how far we could get it into just the border. I thought that was something, but uh, they didn't even go for that. Uh, we only got six votes out of 20 uh, on our committee. Well, it's interesting because the rail is what built New Hampshire. 
because many the, years ago it, yes in the early days the only way you could get from mm -hmm. here to let's say the white mountains or further was by rail mm -hmm. and then uh, so some of the great the balsams and places like that were built i mean enormous places beautiful places in the world were way up in new hampshire then a car mm -hmm. came along which basically kill the rate, you know, the railroad. Yeah. But now the car is clogging the highways, and we've got to get more people. You know, we need more forms of transportation. Uh, buses are filled. The buses are doing very well, but they're still in the traffic. Well, do you think that you know one of the parts of the plan was to make Nashua sort of an intermodal center? where buses and trains and cars and everything came yes. together. Yes. I know one of the big problems I see in the state is the east-west uh, traffic, especially across the southern tier of the, of the state. We don't really have good methods of people getting back and forth from, from Keene to Portsmouth. Uh, but I thought there was a highway system or something in the a, a long time ago that's complicated yeah that's really i mean you have some of the yeah. routes uh, the old routes but yeah. they're only two lane roads i know that Is that's that a problem and and if they come through the heart of uh, nashua that's another problem uh so i'm not sure amherst street is the only one 101 is the only direct path and that's a shopping center all the way from one end of nashua to the other correct yeah. But you know, if I can understand why people don't want rail because the pol the Republican politicians and some Democratic politicians don't want it because they say it's going to cost too much. But we're like the only state in the United States that doesn't have rail. I mean, we're not backward, are we? No. We need it. It will fill up if you want to bring business businesses up here. That's well, kind that's, of what they look for. They're, how's your infrastructure? There's, I know infrastructure is a big thing, and I, I'm for making sure we keep our uh, uh, infrastructure up to date. I think that's something that we can talk about later uh, with how, how to finance some of that. But uh, what bothers me is some of those numbers there. I don't think they're realistic in a way. And that's why I wanted to do it one step at a time. The numbers? Uh, the numbers of passengers. You said that it would fill oh, up right oh, away. Oh, I, I, don't, think that, I and, don't think there's a problem. The only, I've, I used to take the railroad, well, it was in Nashua before, so we used to go to Boston uh, from Nashua. Of course, they had a beautiful station, which they ripped down. Mm -hmm. They should have, if they would have, I mean, it was you know, historically beautiful. Uh, but I, and I've taken it from Lowell, but that's a hassle because now where do you park? I mean, it, it, it's so many cars down there from, from New Hampshire trying to get the train into Boston. I mean, honestly, you wouldn't believe it. it's going to be half the cars well, in a three or 400, you know, uh, parking lot. What uh, objection do you have for bringing it up to Pheasant Lane? They have plenty of parking uh, area there. And uh, once you establish something, it's easier for people to get there off of Route 3 absolutely. than it is in Lowell. Absolutely. And if you had that right there on the borderline, that would prove your argument. Uh, and that's why I think that might be a first step that's more logical. I absolutely agree with you. And, and besides that, it's not that far off the border. What that's is right. it? A couple. Well, actually, half of Pheasant Lane is in Massachusetts. Uh, not half of it. Well, but not half of it. One section the, well, on the, uh, the, yeah. of the southern uh, side. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, all, those, uh, all those parking areas are in uh, Massachusetts. So actually, uh, uh, halfway in New Hampshire and Massachusetts, you could get on it. Uh, but I think you're right. And I think that once you would see that it would fill up. Uh, but the problem that I saw when I took it, there was like four stops, five stops to get to Boston. Well, that's uh, how else do you do it? I mean, if you built it to Manchester, you used to have six stops before you yes, get to I Boston. Know. I know that. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you, if you can establish that, that that comes in, and, and if you run it fast enough, you know, so that you in and out. Stay on time. Stay on time. Yeah. Make sure the people are lined up, you know, so you only give them two minutes to get on board, and that's it. Let them miss the train once. That's they'll, it. They'll, they'll be there. Yeah.
I mean, that's the way they do it in Japan. You know, they, they only stop for 30 seconds in Japan. Yeah, and, and you want to see the... <laughs> and the people get on and off real, real quick. fast. And, there's a, there's and very a, there's, orderly. There's a lot. But I think, th I think transportation is... is uh, I, I think we're so a little backward when it mm -hmm. comes to that. But the, you're talking money, money, money. But the highways really don't pay. We pay, you know, it cost us money, mm -hmm. highways, et cetera. Sure. And if you start looking at it in those terms and start seeing people making the transition, because if you've come down Route 3 mm -hmm. uh, at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, you're coming from Boston off 128. I mean, honest to God, I think every time I take it about 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the afternoon, I think it's an accident or mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. right up to Lowell. Yeah. You know, you can go 25 miles an hour to a complete stop. I mean, cars, you can see for three or four miles. That's got to stop. Well, uh, I'm not sure how you're going to do that. If you, the, uh, everybody has to bring a car to the train station. <laughs> you're going to have it backed up someplace else. But it's, most, it's, it's more, well, it's easier to get to a station down there in Pheasant Lane. It is downtown Nashua. Or even Manchester. Absolutely. No, no, I think you're right. And I think that would be the, the smartest way to test it. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, and I hate to say it, it's the, the, it's the Republican politicians are stopping it. And in fact, it's the free staters of the Republican Party. McGuire is the one who stopped it in, in the beginning. Well, he believe, his argument really is all, all of, on uh, the mathematics of how you're going to support it. Uh, he claims that uh, there's no way you're going to get uh, that number of passengers. And that's why, you know, you, you're, you're making a big jump. And the example that is being used is that railroad from Maine. Well, that railroad from Maine has never met its projected volume. Never met it. And what do, the, what do they have to do so the subsidy is higher than they have projected? Well... Railroad from Maine and railroad from from Nashua. I mean, is a. I mean, you know, you you're talking different numbers uh, completely. Well, no, I'm just saying yeah, that's I, what I they know, use I as know. the example of, of justifying uh, this one here. Well, the free state is. Uh, I'll give you an example. I was talking to a free stater, and I said, "I'll I'll fight. You know, I'll, I I will fight almost to the death if if they go, attempt to put, uh, you know, a a toll booth in Nashua." Mm -hmm. He said, oh, no, 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 you have to have one. So what are you talking about? He says, you're using the roads. I'm going, excuse me. Yeah. You know, here we are, as we, we talked earlier, we're the economic engine of the state of New Hampshire. You're not going to make it harder for us? Well, it's also a backup uh, into, uh, it makes the congestion a little bit more going through the tolls that are here in a congested area. And by the way, Massachusetts said if you put one on your side, we'll we're going to put one on, on our side. So. I know, the same argument in 93 when yeah. they were going to do that there. But anyway, let's talk about something that uh, we're not going to be able to do anything about this session anyway. That's right. Uh, what are you doing in your committee? I understand you were uh, uh, an out, outcast in one, one vote. It's... it's uh, Everyone is trying to get more business up here in the state of mm -hmm. New Hampshire. And one of the, uh, and you're right, it was 17 to 1, and I was the one who said, you're all wrong, and I'm right. <laughs> of course, that doesn't work out very well. Uh, everybody wants more uh, people to come to New Hampshire. And what they're doing is they're trying to make it easier to get trade names. Okay? And I'm going, well, you shouldn't make it easier but you shouldn't make it harder to do it. So what it's come down to is this. They voted and passed it, and it's going to go before the House. And I will make a speech before the full House. Now, you have Dunkin' Donuts, all right? That's a trade name. You can take the S off Donuts and have a trade name of Dunkin' Donut. You can do that with everything. Uh, you name uh, McDonald's, McDonald. Uh, oh, any, any business in the city of Nashville, private business in the city of Nashville, you, and I'm only using S's, before and after. In other words, you can get a name on anything. In fact, I could get the name of New Hampshire and in the middle of it change two letters 
over and get it. And then I could write awful things about New Hampshire, seriously. And people would look at my advertisements and say, well, the guy's an idiot because he can't spell it, but we know it's New Hampshire. Is that really what we want? Hmm. We, we don't want that. We want people to feel that they can come up here and their names are going mm -hmm. to be, you know, going to be used properly. So what did the law say? Well, at this particular point, you can't, and I'm, it's like seven words you have to put in, basically, is you're not doing this uh, to hurt somebody else's business by, you know, making it obvious. If, I mean, Dunkin' Donuts, give me a break. I thought that was part of the federal way of, uh, don't they have jurisdiction on some of that uh, uh, trademark and stuff? Well, uh, wait a minute. You can, yes, uh, I think you're correct, federally. But you, in New Hampshire, if we pass the law, if you've got a tree service like Johnny's Tree Service, John's Tree Service, guess what? Uh, all those names, and I'm only using an S before and after, mm -hmm. uh, Name the business, any business at so all. So you're saying in New Hampshire they're allowed to do some of these things, well, but you, it's you, not federally. You, well, you're going to be able to do this. And I'm saying, no, don't, don't do that, because you can imagine the headaches that, that, that are going to take place. And it, it doesn't run into uh, some kind of legal? Uh... Well, that's what I'm trying to say. And I've asked that right at the last question. I said, are you saying to me Dunkin' Donuts, and I can get Dunkin' Donut by taking the ass yeah. out? And he said, yes. Mm. And I went, really? Mm. So I can go get New Hampshire and change a letter? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do we really want that? No, we, we, we don't. Well, what is the, why is, uh, who's pushing it? Hmm. Uh, I'd like to tell you idiots. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think they understand because somebody in our committee said, well, you know, you got Johnny's tree service, you got Johnny's restaurant, and they only look at the first name. Yeah. And then well, it's got Johnny's in it, so you can't. Well, that's just not true. No, that's not true. That's just not true. So if anybody can take somebody's name, if you've got any type of a business and put an S in front of it or take the S, I'm only using S's. If anybody can go in and get New Hampshire and with one letter turned around and, and you know it's New Hampshire, I mean, you're going to read it as New Hampshire. Yeah. Uh, you can't do that. So I'm going to have to try to convince everybody that probably about seven words have to be put in, that you're not getting a trade name for that one purpose. You can't take yeah. the S out of Dunkin' Donuts and, and get a trade name. And I just, I think I go crazy. Why would you, you want more people to come up here and do business when if they come up here to try and, and, and get a name, someone can run well, in and. Maybe you take the tactic that you're going to get into all sorts of legal problems because you're contrary to federal law. Well, I was, uh, I'm already planning on it. You see, I I'm, see. Okay. I'm, th I'm thinking Well, ahead. let us all know, and we'll uh, tune in our TV sets to see Gidge against the New Hampshire legislature. <laughs> yeah, but okay. I, I have a feeling that when people start hearing stuff like that, they're going to say that that can't be. And it's really like seven words mm -hmm. just to add to it that says you, you just can't do that. Uh, for that one reason. And the obvious is, is that use Dunkin' Donuts as an example. Well, I have one that uh, we're going to uh, talk about. Uh, we hit, we're try Somebody has entered an order, uh, not an order, uh, legislation, and the Senate is uh, focused on it. Reviewing the way uh, all electric cars uh, <coughs> really pay what they call a road toll. The road toll is really the gas tax. So all gas or even uh, diesel or... Um, uh, liquid, liquefied gas uh, are being taxed now, but the all electric vehicles aren't being taxed at all. At all. Uh, there. Well, I shouldn't say that. that there's a small uh, fee on their registration, and so they want to feel see if that's equal to what a car would pay. The answer is no. <laughs> the answer. The answer is no. So anyway. It's only a commission, but that's and, going and to look be at argued the, about. You know, you know, and they, they don't buy yeah. gas, obviously, mm -hmm. and that's a tax, but you, they don't, they're not taxed for having the vehicle. And you can't tax it so high 
So that that I think this might be a court thing. That's really fascinating. I don't. I'm not. I've not thought of that until well, you, you brought uh, it up. It's something that, as you know, uh, after all these years of them using the road toll or the gas tax yeah. as a slush fund for yes. anything that they needed oh, for the balance of life. Uh, oh, that's give, what they think. Give they, me a break. It's, it's the biggest part of the so-called dedicated funds Republican. that was used for non. Dedicated purposes. Both sides did it. So I'm not it. Well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not denying that part. It just, but it you've just got a mantra you have to turn on every once in a well, while. Well, you know, it just happens to be the Republican politicians now. Just uh, wait. So it will be the Democrat <laughs> politicians pretty soon. But they took the, it the last time. No, so. no, you know, so we can go after you. But but what's the? Uh, can you see any way out of that? Well, they're gonna. They, they're trying to uh, do something to make dedicated funds dedicated, but that's going to take essentially a, co a congressional. Uh, I mean, a, a constitutional uh, amendment. Yeah, fat chance on that. Yeah, yeah. Nobody it's, wants to fool around with that. So I don't know what's going to happen there, but it's it's going to be interesting to see uh, how we do build up our infrastructure, because uh, gas tax is just not going to do it. No. No. Yeah. Do you have time for one more? I got one yeah, quick one. We got... we're, we're, we're coming up. There's something coming out for chemotherapy, and mm -hmm. basically it's a pill form. Yeah. Uh, anybody who has chemotherapy knows that they have to do it a lot of it all at once. That mm -hmm. means they either go to a hospital, get up in the morning, go to a hospital, uh, they're injected, etc. Uh, mm -hmm. It's invasive, and then they come home and they're they're exhausted. Well, now they're coming up with a pill form. So you still have to go there, take the pill, wait a while. After you do it two days, you don't have a problem. On the third day, you can do it at home, and the fourth day. So, so the pill form is really good. And the Republican politicians are saying that it's going to be too expensive for us to do this. But when one considers all the trouble a person who has cancer goes through just to get, you know. Why, the, what is adding to the cost? The only thing I heard is that uh, the Medicare um, cost is the same for both, and they feel that no, once the insurance companies, the insurance companies, are doing well, they're saying that there are companies that are grandfathered in uh, old insurance companies, and if you have a policy with them, it can cost you like fifty thousand dollars a month through this insurance company. So I talked to the the, the former insurance insurance. Uh, uh, the lady who used to, you know, uh, you know uh, who she is, uh, Rogers, mm -hmm. uh, who who ran the insurance department here, and she said, no, there are very few, very very few of those. So that's that's a a big argument. And uh, let me tell you something: anything to help people make it easier when they have cancer is is really really important. Well, I th yeah, I, I think in general, a lot of this service work uh, that is being built, and if you can cut that out, you're cutting out a lot of money. Uh, and uh, I don't know whether they think that uh, this is a very profitable part of their income or not. Oh, well, think about it. Uh, it's going to be cheaper for us if you have cancer. It's going to, the hospital is going to lose business because right. the people are not going to come in. The doctors are basically going to, going to lose business. So here is something that helps the individual, but it may take money away from the insurance companies and the hospitals and the doctors. So this, this is kind of an interesting... It might take money away from whoever applies the uh, syringe or whatever. Well, yes, that's what of, it, nurses... Yeah, uh, but that the insurance company. The insurance company is only... Uh, I mean, they 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 get back their money it's one way or another. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it that, is. That's something very new. And, and by the way, uh, if anyone wants to know, all all uh, pharmacies at this particular point are now putting everything into liquid or pill form. So that's and all, and a lot of cancers I have uh, particular pills or, or mixtures that that go right for the cancer, right at the cancer. Right. So. Th Things are changing. There, yeah, there's monoclonal antibodies, but there's also a problem, too, with some people's reaction to some of those. Correct. So that's why you have to try it out first. Right, that's what I, in, yeah, that's what medical. I said. That's what yeah. I said. Thir we, there's 37 states that do that, and I can't see the argument. Well, the feedback I get from the people that are communicating with the Senate is that there's not going to be too, much, too many surprises or anything. 
uh, there's a couple of things that uh, might be different. Uh, I understand the uh, Senate's cut some of the funding for uh, DREAD, uh, our economic development uh, team, but uh, I don't quite understand why they did that. I mean, it's a few thousand, not a few thousand, I guess it's a million dollars or something. But it's, uh, it's to allow them to travel around to try to get companies to bring come here in Massachusetts. Well, you guys uh, did, the, did the budget, and you took money or, or left it flat, and that was the, uh, uh, our state that goes out and advertises. Uh, you know, our, our state of New Hampshire goes out and does all the advertising. And, and well, for every dollar we advertise the state, $7.99 comes back. And when I hear people taking money away from that tourism dollars, I think, are you crazy? Well, one of the things that uh, has affected all the things that we looked at is the effectiveness of using that money. Have as it, maybe some of the reasons are that we don't evaluate our programs. I know a lot of that has happened in uh, HHS because they have the biggest part of the budget. Uh, the people are looking at that to try to, are you getting the bang for the buck? I think that we you talked think about that? this before. You're, yeah. cor you're correct, and I, and I went with you, but the, when it comes to tourism dollars, I think that, that is. I think that's a big part of. It's seven it dollars, yeah. and no, no, they've already. You can go yeah. anywhere and find that on on the internet. Seven dollars and ninety nine cents for one dollar that you put in, and when you take dollars away, then that's not sensible because if you want to cut taxes and help people, you got to bring money into the state. Right. You have to invest into the state. Well, we'll see what happens, and uh, and end of June, we'll see if we're both happy or both sad, or one's happy and one's sad. <laughs> I'll be so, working all summer. I've got two two committees I'm going to be on. Oh boy. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing, but I know we'll have a commission uh, uh, looking at those road tolls. So we'll see uh, how that goes. So thank you very much, Ken. You're very welcome. And uh, we'll uh, we'll be talking again. For sure. I hope one so. Democrat to one Republican. Yes, a good Democrat, bad Republican. I know how it works. And thank you for listening in. I just wanted to remind you that the June meeting for the Na Nashua Republican City Committee has been postponed till August. So look for our uh, information on NashuaGOP.org. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at our meetings at the Crown Plaza. Thank you for listening. Seating program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.